continuing the same ideas from last week's parasha. Just last week we spoke, spoke about sensitivity in marriage, where this week, Be'ezrat Hashem, we're going to speak about sensitivity in other people's marriages, which means in our parasha we see how careful one should be when he deals with other people's marriages. You're not getting involved in other people's marriages unless it's for helping, unless it's to build up the marriage, to make it better. But sometimes we all know that something is so bad in other people's marriages, we need to intervene and we need to tell one of the spouse how terrible it is for him to be in such a marriage and what to do at certain points where the Torah over here teaches us what's the right approach. And who is the one that's going to teach us more than anybody else what's the right approach when we're dealing with other people's marriages? No one else than HaKadosh Baruch Hu himself. As we see in our parasha, that when Hashem Barach sends the Malachim to Avraham and Sarah, the question that is, is on the line now, are Avraham and Sarah ready to children? Would they be able to have children? And the Malachim come to inform Avraham and Sarah that indeed so, you will have a child. Sarah Imenu is now 89 years old when she's getting the Besora that in one year from now, Kayet Chaya, who Sarah Ben, which means in a year from now, when she'll be 90 years old, she'll have a child. What's the approach of Sarah when she hears that She's going to have a child next year. That's what she hears, the Malach saying. The Lashon of the Pasuk is, They were very old. Sarah and Avraham were old already. Which means it's impossible for her to have any more children. So therefore, when she hears the message that she's going to have a child, as the Malach says, Next time I will come, Sarah will have a child. Which means Sarah hears that message. She hears that besora. And Sarah approached to that. Sarah starts laughing. She says, that's impossible. After I became old, I'm going to have a child. Is that possible? How could I have a child when I'm already so my, my, my body is already wrinkled, my body is so old, and my master, my husband, Sarai Menu had in her mind. She said the following, Flash became already old, my whole body became wrinkled. Is it possible would it be possible that my flesh would become all, over, all of the sun beautiful all the wrinkles become stretched now I look like a young woman again and the beauty will come back to its place is that possible so this is the approach of Sarai Menu so she says Sarai Menu two things here one thing Sarai Menu is thinking to herself, after I became old, I will become beautiful again. Second point that Sarai Menu says, how is it possible that I'm going to have a child? My husband is old. So when Hashem Barach approaches Avraham Avinu, why did Sarai Menu say that she is already old? That is not what Sarai Menu said. Sarai Menu was thinking, how is it possible I'm going to have a child? A, I'm already not looking well. My body is not beautiful anymore. And the second point that she was saying, my husband is old. And when HaKadosh Baruch Hu approaches Avraham Avinu, he doesn't say the first part of what Sarai Menu have thought to herself, which is she's not beautiful anymore. And he does say the second part, but it changes from what he's saying. Because Sarai Menu said, my husband is old. And when Hashem Barach approaches Avraham Avinu, he tells her, Sarai Menu said that she is old. 
האף אמנם מלד, ואני זקנתי. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu finishes his words, Eipalem Adonai דבר למועד, אשוב אליך כעת חיה אוצר אבן, nothing is too big or too hard for HaKadosh Baruch Hu to do. But we need to go on that point, how did Hashem change the words of Sarai Menu? The Gemara in Bermatsiya says, Vadoni Zaken Ktiv, in one, Sarai Menu says Vadoni Zaken, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu says to Avraham, Vani Zakanti. HaKadosh Baruch Hu sends the message that Sarai Menu said, I am old. Sarai Menu is talking about herself. And the Gemara says, Zelo motiv HaKadosh Baruch Hu kede amra. HaKadosh Baruch Hu didn't say and repeat like Sarai Menu said. How is that possible? Taned ve-Rabi Ishmael, gadol ha-shalom she-afilo HaKadosh Baruch Hu m'shane bo. The peace is so important that even Hashem Yitbarach changes from what Sarai Menu said. How important it is to keep the marriage the way it is and not to ruin for other peoples. This we learn from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And Rashi points it out over here. V'aniza kanti shina katub mifnei ha-shalom. In order to keep the peace between Avraham and Sarah, it was changed from the words that Sarah said, Sharei amra v'andodni zaken. So we're seeing the first point over here, which is a very important point. When HaKadosh Baruch Hu approaches Avraham Avinu, he does it with much sensitivity. He wants to tell him and send the message that you will have a child next year. Don't worry about it. And this that you're thinking, that the person is too old, it's not going to happen, you need to know that for Hashem, nothing is hard to do. Is it too hard for HaKadosh Baruch Hu to do anything? Not too hard. So therefore, that message he needs to words, and that's how we see that even for Sarai and Avraham, they were in the state of respect and love for each other, of having that feeling that one needs the other at the utmost level, and nothing can interrupt that marriage. That message, that you need to be super sensitive, make sure that that's going to cause person to feel that he doesn't love me that much, he doesn't respect me that much, he thinks about me something no. So, still 100% okay. It's her that she's saying she's too old, and old means she can't have children anymore. But the Kadosh Baruch Hu, besides that first point, teaches us another point. Kadosh Baruch Hu eliminates, he erases the first words that Sarai Menu said, and that is, I'm not beautiful anymore. A body that's not beautiful anymore can bear a child, as the Mepharshim explain over here. A body that doesn't able to have a child can't have also anything to do with such a thing. So therefore, comes a Kadosh Buhu who eliminates those words. You know why? Because a Kadosh Buhu knows you can't come to the husband and tell him your wife said she's not beautiful. Her body is wrinkled. Her body is not nice anymore. That you can't say anymore. When you talk to Avraham Avinu, when you talk to the husband, you need to know that his wife and his eyes are the most beautiful. As uh, we found that last week, Avraham Avinu said to Sarah that she's so beautiful. He, he pointed it out to Sarah Imenu. So obviously that's what uh, Avraham Avinu has in mind. And Chazal tell us that Avraham Avinu wasn't at Sarah so much. Happened to be that he saw her, she, she saw, he saw that she's very, very beautiful. But on the same time right now that Abraham Avinu has, in his, in, has that in mind, you don't want to put any negative ideas in his mind. You don't want to tell him that Sarah Imenu said she's already old with wrinkles and this and that, that you don't want to put in Abraham Avinu's mind. So HaKadosh Baruch completely takes that off. And we're learning from that how important it is when you speak to the husband, you speak to the wife, you don't say anything negative on the other person. And sometimes the husband doesn't see anything, anything negative on his wife. He thinks that his wife is the best of the best. She's the nicest, she's the kindest, she's the most sanua, she's the most beautiful, and so on and so forth. You come to the husband, and sometimes it's a, a relative, a relative that's good meaning. He comes and he tells him, ah, you know, why your wife doesn't help? Why she doesn't go shopping for the house? Why she doesn't clean the house? Why this? Why that? You put things in his mind. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu teaches us over here that even HaKadosh Baruch Hu himself 
had to change from what, what, has, what have done over here in reality. What Sarai Menu actually said, he had to change that, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and say it in a different way, in a different fashion, in order not to put anything negative in Avraham Avinu's mind. Sometimes a person comes to a, to a husband, and sometimes he comes to his wife. Sometimes it's a mother-in-law, sometimes it's a father-in-law. You come to, uh, they come to their daughter, oh, look, your husband, he doesn't give you enough money, he doesn't take care of you, he doesn't do the shopping. All other husbands do the shopping. Why can't your husband do the shopping as well? Over here, we learn that that's the wrong approach, but it's so wrong that it's so devastating that we're learning over here that even by Sarai and Avraham, that if HaKadosh Baruch Hu would say things the way they are, nothing major would change over here, nothing so terrible. Although we can say that it would have some effect, and that's why HaKadosh Baruch Hu had to change. But you can imagine that we're talking about Avraham Avinu, that was Kodesh Kodashim, the last thing in his, has in, he has in his mind is the beauty of his wife. And she's already 90 years old and he's 189 and he's 99 years old. So we're talking about people that are extremely old. As the Pasuk says over here, They're very old. We're talking about people that are Kodesh Kodashim, the highest Kedusha possible, that the last thing they have in their mind is physical beauty. And a Kadosh Baruch Hu hears the words of Sarah, and he changes that in order that Avraham Avinu would not have one little bit less respect for Sarai Menu, one little bit love for Sarai Menu, one little bit feeling that his wife is not so beautiful. And comes to teach us a Kalvachomer, Ben Bnoshel Kalvachomer. When you come to a husband that the marriage, or to a wife, that the marriage is not so stable altogether, we all know how dangerous it is when you come and you put your 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 two 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 you put your minds into it and you put the words the wrong negative words into it and how devastating that could be how much change the feeling that one has to the others and even more than that sometimes that all you need in order to break that marriage it's the straw that breaks the camel's back and that is something that we all learn from Avraham Avinu, how sensitive one should be at that aspect. And when we continue that, we see that in many, many places that Chazal teach us how one should be sensitive in other people's marriages. Like, for instance, Chazal tells us about Aaron Cohen that he was Ohev Shalom, Verodef Shalom. And Chazal tells us how it would be done Aaron would see people that are fighting, he would come to the person and he would find him on the street or in the shul and tell him, why are you fighting? He really loves you so much. He's so sad that he, that he said and he regrets everything that he said to you negative. When in reality, that never happened. The other person never regretted and never felt anything that he did wrong. But when Aaron found that person, he told him, oh, you know, the other person you're fighting with regrets everything, feels so bad about what he did. He's crying over it. When a person feels and hears that, right away the feeling changed within him. Then he would go. Aaron Cohen would be matriach himself to go to the other person, knock on his door. Obviously, he didn't have much time on his hand. We don't have time on, his, on our hand. Aaron Cohen would have time. He would take care of Klal Israel. He would be the one that's leading Klal Israel. Still, he would find the time to go to the other person, knock on his door. Oh, I just met the person you had a fight with, and he regrets it. He feels so bad. Why don't you make up? And people would make up, and things would be good. So when Aaron was, when Aaron passed away, it says, "Vayivkua et Aaron kol bet Israel." Rashi says, "What does it mean, kol bet Israel?" We don't find this by Moshe Rabbeinu. Even by Moshe Rabbeinu, we don't find such a lashon. Moshe Rabbeinu didn't have this chut that the entire Bet Israel would cry over him. Says Rashi, Ha'anashim v'anashim, lefi shaya rodef shalom, u'mati la'ava ben ba'alei meriva u'ven ish le'ishto. Which means Rashi tells us over here that Aaron Cohen would make peace not only between two people, but one of the main projects of Aaron was to make shalom bait. When he would see two people fighting, Aaron would interrupt over there for the good. He would make sure that things would be for the better. And that is Aaron's specialty. 
And that's why Aaron Cohen got forever and ever this title of being Ohev Shalom, Verodev Shalom. We should be learning from that, that always, whenever you see something negative, obviously, we're talking about Aaron, he came to one spouse, he came to the husband, and he tells him, what's going on? I heard you have a fight with your wife. He tells him, you, you don't know, my wife is this, and my wife is this. And obviously, the husband was saying, was not lying to Aaron. He was saying good points over here, that his wife is so, is so negative. We would tell him things to make things better, to tell him you're wrong. You have over here a gem. You don't know what you're missing. Even if the things that he was saying were not true, it gets into the heart. And he would do the same thing to the wife. He would get to the heart, and eventually they would make up. And because of that, that was such a great loss that when he passed away, everybody cried. Because now, who's going to fix marriages in such a professional way? And the Gemara says in Ketuvot, Ketzad merakdim lifnei akala. How do you sing, sing and, and praise a kala in front of the husband? What are you supposed to say? So Betty, let's say that Omrim kala na'a v'chasuda. You tell him your wife that you're marrying is gorgeous, so beautiful. Kala na'a v'chasuda, such a balat midot, such a great woman you're marrying. Amar le, amru le bet shamay le Betty Lel. Aresha eta chigeret osuma. Omrim la kala na'a v'chasuda. That's good if you're saying all those praises when they're true. But what happens if really you see that the kala over here is not so? And this person is marrying his wife, and he doesn't see, he was blinded in the shiduchim. It's sometimes you don't see the negatives. And you come and you tell him, your, your wife is unbelievable, she's so nice, such a, such, such a great couple, you, you're so lucky. How could you say such words? You're lying, you're lying, you know this person looks terrible. You're telling him, you, hey, you, you, you're so lucky, you got a metzia over here, how could you say that? So Bet Hillel replied to Bet Shammai and told him, Ledivrechem. That would be all true when you, that, you, you didn't buy the item yet. You can tell him, look, this has this problem, that defect, this problem. What then married already, you change the truth. You tell a person the opposite from the wrong things, which is, although over here the truth is, she's chigeret osuma. She doesn't look good. You tell him, no, you, you married with such a beautiful wife. How do you find such a thing? You're so lucky. That's how Bet Hillel teaches us. And this is how it comes out, lehalacha, how important we need to take that point and apply it when we come out and see people that are fighting. What should we done? Many people feel that, especially by in-laws, that we have to stand up for our daughter. We have to stand out for her son. And therefore, they interrupting over here. First thing they do is they poison their mind right away. Really? That's what he said to you? That's what he did to you? And you, when a parent says such a thing to the child, he has a right away very, very negative effect. Anybody that says anything has a negative effect. But when a parent says something, it's poisonous because a child looks up to his parents throughout his life. He fed from his parents' ideas, he, their mindsets is pretty much the way he is. Whatever they think is pretty much the way he thinks because he grew up in their houses with the way they raised him, with the same ideas, with the same morals, with the same things that throughout the years they slowly, slowly put into his mind. And now that they're coming and opening his eyes, that his wife or her, his, her husband, he's doing this negative or that negative. And really, how did you marry such a thing? We had over here such a, such, we, we, we were wrong over here for marrying such a thing. It was completely disaster how we did such a, such a bad move. When a person feels that way and gives it over to his children, the very next thing you know is that they're making the separation between the two much larger and sometimes it's not even anymore fixable at that point when they put their emphasis into it and they put their mind into it and the poisonous words into it and we need to learn 
that this is exactly the opposite from the way the Torah teaches us in our parasha and from those chazalim that we learned over here. But it's more than that. Sometimes they even go the extra mile. It's not only that they're putting their mind and their words, their negative words into the person's uh, head, but even more than that, sometimes they're helping him or helping her do some very, very negative moves, which those moves could lead to very bad things. And sometimes they tell them, come, you come to my house, leave him alone, let him stay in his house, let him learn a lesson, come to my house. When he comes to her, to, to the house, when she comes to the house, usually that is the beginning of the end. Because right now, if they've been together, it's very possible that they would, in some point, make up. Because they have to live with each other. So if they live with each other, unless you see that things are going so bad, that it's been going for a long time, so, so negative, and there's no, and, and they can't fix it, it's not fixable. It's not anymore, it's in the, it, in the point that it's, it's completely savage. So in that, in that idea, maybe a person should help out, and there's ways how to help out. But to just right away jump and tell the person, come to my house, teach him a lesson, don't be together with him, don't be with her, stay away from him, stay away from her, don't call anymore. Usually that what breaks a marriage and now, even if they want to make up, it becomes so, so much harder because they're not in the same house anymore. They can't talk it out. They can't come to each other and say that they're sorry. They're already in different houses. It's, a, it's, it's already making things so hard to pick up the phone. It's so hard to give in to the other. It's so hard to eventually put the pieces together. And therefore, we found that few gemarot, how the chachamim, looked at such marriages. A Gemara in the Darim that tells us, Ahuda amar le ledevitu, konam she'enat ne'enet li, at she'tataimi tavshilech le'rabi Yehuda or Rabbi Shimon. A husband, it was a husband that was a little bit with an anger issue. He came to his wife and he told her, look, I'm not going to have any more. I'm not going to give, I'm not going to let you benefit anymore from anything in this house. I'm not giving you anymore. I'm not doing for you anymore until you take that tavshil, this cooking that you just made, this dish that you just made, and give it to Rav Yudah and Rabbi Shimon to eat. That's a chasach chutzpah. Rav Yudah and Rabbi Shimon, you come approach Rav Yudah and Rabbi Shimon, gdolei ador, these were the giants of the generations, and you're giving them from the dish that she just made for her husband, who knows what's the kashrut, who knows that, what if it's good, who will who be... be who invited her to give them? It's just like not shy. If you go today to Gdola Dor and you offer him something that you made in your house, they're not looking at it. They're not touching it. So what should be the approach over here? Lichora, they should say, forget about it. I'm not touching something. I don't know who you are. And Rabbi Yudah says the Gemara Ta'im. Rabbi Yudah ate from it. You know why? He said, Kalvachomer, Umala asot shalom benish lishto amra Torah, shmi shenichtav bekdusha imache alamayim amarerim. That I could eat such a thing, which means even a Kadosh who teaches us when it comes to marriages, it's better off that you should take my name that was written on the cloth, my name that is not allowed to be erased, Yudke Vavke, we're not allowed to be erased. It's a Isu to erase Hashem's name, and it's a Isu Chamur. And Hashem says, you know what? When we're dealing with Shlom Bayit, Lasim Shalom You take that, you put it in the Maima Me'arim where they're going to be erased. It's a Yisur to do such a thing. Says a Kadosh Buhu, for Shalom Bayit, you should do such a thing in order to make sure that they come back together. And this is only on the Safek that something te terrible happened between the two. Definitely over here, says of Yudah, that this husband is demanding from his wife that I should eat from her food. Rav Yudah said, I will eat from it. And another Gemara is that with Shimon ben Gamliel, that a husband told his wife, Konam Shimon ben Gamliel. Such a chutzpah. He tells his wife, look, I'm not nothing to do whatsoever anymore until you go and you spit at Rav Shimon ben Gamliel. Now, Rav Shimon ben Gamliel was 
the Nasi, the head of everything. He was the greatest Talmud Chacham of the generation. And he tells her, 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 his wife, go spit at him. That's, that's unheard of. That's like a Bizayon Torah, Bizayon Nesiut, Bizayon Am Israel. It's just, you, you don't do it to, to a pauper in the street. You don't do it to a goy. You don't do it at the animal. You're going to do it at Rav Shimon Bar Yochai. Atat verakak. Says the Gemara, she went and she did it, which means Rav Shimon Gamliel allowed it because he knew that in order to have Shalom Bayit between two people, if that's what it takes, that is fine. And another Gemara that we found in the same idea, more or less, is Ahu Bar Bavel de Salik Leara de Israel. A person came from Bavel and he, he, he came and lived in Eretz Israel. He settled in Eretz Israel and he married a woman over there. She wasn't 100% understanding his language. They didn't talk exactly the same languages. He's from Bavel, she's from Eretz Israel. He says things she misunderstands. So at the process of misunderstanding, there was a lot of uh, confusion over here between the two. So one point, he told her, please make me talfi. Instead of that, she cooks him beans. So that's not what I asked you to do. I don't like beans. That's what happened the first day. Second day, say, say, another thing. Third day, nothing until the following story. Bring me two kishuim. She brought, instead of that, since botsini also has the same uh, uh, explanation you, you hear in the word botsini, also candles. So she thought that what he's trying to tell her is bring me two candles where he meant that she should bring kishuim. Amar la zil tveri yaton al reisha de baba. It's all the way bring me two candles. Take those two candles and break them on the gate. So Baba, she didn't understand that Baba means a gate because she's from Eretz Israel. She doesn't understand his language. She thought but that what he's saying, Baba means Baba ben Buta. Haviyativ Baba ben Buta, Ababa vekandain dina. Baba ben Buta was the greatest dayan he was the greatest judge, and he was sitting at his bed din and judging now people. Two people were in front of him, din Torah, very, very serious. Long and behold, who walks in? This woman, Azlat Tavrayaton al Reishe. She comes into the main Dayan, she walks up the stage, and she breaks it on his head. What did you do to me? I don't understand what happened over here. She tells him, my husband commanded me. He told me, go break them on the head of Baba Ben Buta. This is what he said. So he told her the following. Listen to the words. He gave her a bracha that since you did what your husband told you to do, it's so beautiful that Hashem should merit you with children just like Baba Ben Buddha, two children just like Baba Ben Buddha, which means over here we're learning the sensitivity again of these Chachamim that when it came to marriages of others, they went out of the ways to do anything taken, anything possible, whether it would be even on the, uh, even the, uh, of their Bizayon, there would be Midbaze, he would, she would break it on his head, they would spit on him, give him from the tafshil, things that are not done normally, they were willing to take that in order to make sure that the house will be now peaceful. And this is the first point. But the second point is that not only that, but if one can, he should try to build the other marriage. And how is that? So this we learn from the beginning of our parasha again. When the Malachim come, to Abraham Avinu, and they, when, when they approach by Abraham Avinu, he brings them uh, under the tree, and they ask him, Vayomru elav, ayes Sarah ishtecha, where is your wife Sarah? Vayomru ine ba'oel, oh, she's in the tent. What was she, what were they doing over here? Why did they care to ask about Sarah? Is that proper thing to do? He asked, where is Sarah? So Rashi tells us that there was a reason why they did it. This is the reason they asked him where she was in order to put in his mind that she's Tznua. Why? Says Rashi. Malachi Asharet knew exactly where Sarai Menu is. 
אלא להודיע שצנועה הייתה. They wanted to show Abraham Avinu, to inform him that she is צנועה, she's modest. Why? כדי לחבבה על בעלה. Abraham Avinu is now 99 years old. His wife Sarah is 89 years old. And she's in the tent. Come the Malachim and feel that it's very important that Abraham Avinu should have extra love for his wife. Lechabeval Bala. So what are they doing? They know that Abraham Avinu loves modesty, loves tzniut, and therefore they come in a very, very manipulative way and they tell him, where is Sarah? But they know Sarah is in the tent. And Sarah, Abraham Avinu says, oh, my wife, my wife Sarah, she's in the tent, she's very modest, she's tzanua. What did they accomplish by that? A little bit more love between Avraham and Sarah. Kedei lechabeva al baala. Says Rashi that the pasuk over here, ayes Sarah ishtecha, when you take a look at the words, vayomru elav, it has nekudot, it has dots on top of those, on, the, on those words. Elav, alef, yud, and vav gets a, da, a dot on top, which means the lamed is taken away. Why? Says Rashi Nakud al Ayo Shebe Elav. What's the reason? Says Rashi that not only that they asked where is Sarah, but on the same time they asked Sarah when they met her, where is Avraham Avinu? Which means that they worked on a double way. They knew where Avraham Avinu was, but you want to build up the love between Avraham, you want to build up the love between Sarah. For the extra mile, you do something special for the other person that he would feel that his wife is so special. You want to do something that the husband, that the wife should feel that her husband is so special. This is how the Malachim teach us. And although there was a whole message over here that they needed to do, they needed over here to be Merape Avraham, to tell him about his child that he's going to have, and to tell him about Hafechat Sedom, but they didn't forget that although this is the main message, this is the main reason they came over here. That is the shlichut, but on the same time, you always need to push something there to make sure to build up the shlom bite between the two. And again, we're talking about Sarah and Avraham. They didn't need counseling for a shlom bite. They didn't have any problems of shlom bite. Not only that, they had the highest form of shlom bite. They were totally united. But we're learning from here that even in such an instance, if you need need to add chavivut, how much more so when people are not so stable in their marriage, you need to push a little bit more to make sure that they stay happy together and chas v'shalom to do the opposite.